Hey YouTube, thought about doing this live, but I haven't been satisfied with the live streaming quality in it, on my phone especially. Don't have a way to use my computer. Um, it, it's food month, airborne death has been done, if you haven't seen that, yeah, that's pretty much done. I mean, there's still some stuff to do, like the, the competition that it's going to be entered in, stuff like that. Now to have a pizza crust. Um, so yeah, uh, I'm doing a little food video because I figured I would uh, document some of this process. That, uh, this is just something I've never tried before. So, you're good. You're good. Yeah, you're good. Don't worry. No worries. People are going to be coming in and out of this all the time, so there's no worries. And really, I'm not worried about anybody. It's just going to happen. That's what happens when you're recording uh, unplanned, just kind of, hey, doing a video, kind of a thing. So, anyways. Um, yeah, yeah, this pizza crust would look a little bit nicer if it weren't for the fact that we don't have any white flour, and so I can't, um, uh, what's the word? I, oh yeah, I can't get it tossed out. This is a crust from Lucy's Pizzeria. Uh, they go for two dollars, any size. It's twelve inch small. Or no, sorry, I think seven. Yeah, twelve inch small, fifteen inch medium, or this right here, which is an eighteen inch large. But our pizza stone is fifteen inches, and it's been rolled out. What I'm going to do here, because it's been sitting out for just a little bit, I had to roll it out and really finesse it. I'm just going to, no more than that, I'm just going to put a little bit of oil on the top of the crust here, some extra virgin olive oil. Make sure that it's, ah, uh, those coals keep coming up, and it's so stupid. I'm going to smooth them out, I'm going to get them gone, and then... Hi, I'm a hole in your pizza crust. Go away. Bothers me. Okay. I'm just going to have to accept it, and if you have to eat it with a fork, you have to eat it with a fork. So, I'm going to take the oil off my hands really quickly. Ah. And I keep turning on the hot water. You're supposed to use hot water for washing your hands, yes, but um, for sanitary reasons, but since I'm literally just getting some oil off of my hands, I don't need to be sanitary and it's hot in our house because we're finishing the upstairs. We hear building noises, that's what that is. And so we don't have any AC because where the AC is located and the intake's there and yes. Wow. Oven's pretty warm, but I said it to be warm. So what I'm gonna do is I need I need this. Right here, because I'm going to mount this little uh, grinder here. And the reason that I have, man, I wish I had a cameraman. I'm going to just temporarily, and this is supposed to be quick and dirty, so don't expect a whole lot of editing on this. I do have plans to do better episodes in the future, actual cameraman, maybe two cameras if I can. Try and capture uh, different angles, and that's right. That one there doesn't isn't thick enough, uh, so that's why we come back and we just layer it with the kitchen towel. And uh, this is just a back to basics uh, hand powered grinder for wheat and other stuff like that, and. some stuff on the other end for a little bit of weight. I'm not doing it to be super weighted down, but I'm just trying to take uh, cornmeal right here, and I'm just trying to get that to be a little bit finer. It's going to be my spread on the bottom for, so that the pizza doesn't stick. And also because I'm trying to use the stone like you're supposed to, where instead of like, you know, a pizza pan, you put the pizza on and throw it in the oven, you actually get the stone warm and then you toss the pizza on from the pizza peel. That's how expensive pizza parlors do it. That's how Lucy's does it. That's how they've got. Uh, they have the um, they 
have the bottom of the oven is literally a giant pizza stone. The thing that's good about this is it's good for really small amounts. Whereas we do have some bigger grinders that, I don't know if they do cornmeal, but they definitely do wheat. If we make, use them to grind up and make bread. They're called whisper mills. I don't know why they're called whisper mills, because they're pretty loud. It's like a jet engine starting up and shutting down. But they do get wheat really fine, and we use whole wheat. And whole wheat makes too much gluten sticking together with the Lucy's crust, which is white wheat. And so... There we go. I'm gonna go ahead and zoom back out. There we have our much finer cornmeal grind. So I am literally just gonna take and pour the cornmeal onto here, just pour all of that little, maybe a tablespoon or so that I did to come over with our crust, which you guys can't see this detail. But the bottom is a little bit brown looking in spots. That's because I used whole wheat flour as the, the thing to make it so that it doesn't um, stick. And that, I have plenty of oil down too. And ow, this is hot, hot, hot pan. You can really spread this around as best I can. Kind of carefully transfer this over. Put it on here. Let's pull it out again. Uh, that hole. Um, let me. Oops. Let me pipe a little more light into the scene here. This is just the house lights. That stinking hole. Yeah. Now, if you guys haven't seen Cooking with a Flare for the Bazaar before, uh, aside from the video quality being not so good because the camera I was using was a real actual camera, not like a flip phone. No, but it wasn't HD or anything fancy. So, go watch those because those, as far as like production quality, are better than these somewhat. And a really stretch and squish. Kind of fill that hole. We've got some extra crusties up here. And I think we can just bring this around like this and stretch pinch and squeeze. And... Who am I kidding? It's not going to get better. But the main point that I need to check for is uh, this. Yeah, no. More cornmeal, please. More cornmeal. So yeah, um, this pizza's got a unique thing that I'm going to be doing to it. So, yeah. Come on. Come on. the actual counter there wouldn't be so much jiggling this like this. The counter is too thick for this thing and the edges are curved and Good enough. Okay. I'm gonna pour this right on top of the pizza. I kind of also like the texture that cornmeal gives, especially on the bottom of like bagels and stuff like that. Okay. Pull up the other side. I'm having some more cornmeal. 
and it is getting ridiculous. I am like sweating right here next to this 450 degree oven. Yeah, yeah, so I think we're good now. If I unfold this half of the pizza crust, kind of it's gonna end up being a little bit, actually it's kind of octagonal right now. No, sorry, hexagonal. And I actually kind of like that, so I might like at the end shape it to be hexagonish maybe, but um, there's a little bit of stickage up there. Just treat that spot with some of our cornmeal. Okay, there we go. That slides. So I have a feeling like that would slide off when it's time to transfer it. So I'm going to go ahead and stick over. Go ahead. Now it shouldn't stick to our pizza peel going in the oven. Way hot. So. That is good. Let's go ahead and put toppings on it. Throw her in the oven. Okay. Got cheese here. Mm. This is Cash Valley Creamery, not sponsored, but string cheese, a little moisture. Dark skin milk, so not the best cheese, but I've gotten, I got, there was some on sale and I've never had them before, so I decided to try them. And they're actually cheese that I ended up liking. So, and they didn't have any shredded, so we're just going to have to shred up these strings of cheese. Let me see. Back over here. And grab our cheese. So you can come here just wait. Yeah, there's going to be people coming in and out of the kitchen the whole time. Anytime I'm live in a public space, I'm not expecting it to be like perfect filming nobody in there. Unless I say, hey everybody, I'm filming, stay out of this room. I did not say that to anybody, so, yeah. Well, when I first came in, I thought you were talking to me. Nope. And it helps if you just keep on doing the video and don't say anything. Okay. Using our caution to grind cheese. This is an all-in-one that's actually really good and does everything good. I think there's maybe some features, like blade design is different on like a Ninja, but other than that, this is an all-in-one that does it really good, and I like it. Um, in fact, back in culinary school, one of the substitute teachers had the original Bosch mixer from, I don't know, at this point in time now, if it's still working, at least 20 plus years ago. Still working back then, probably still working today with the performance of it. 40, 40 years at least. Wow, yeah, 40 years. Never combine upstairs construction, no way see, plus trying to make a masterpiece. Uh, we do actually have a small heater in the front room for just the front room because it never got really good um, cooling up there anyways. And that is specifically but right now, I've got that one turned on to the max. Coldest it will go, which is 60 degrees. And then I got two other fans blowing the air this way. So it's kind of sort of helping, kind of sort of not. Okay, in a minute here, I'm going to have to restart my recording. You know, it wasn't perfect, but at Culinary School, we had a really cool system in one room where like there were these cameras and stuff and they were monitoring like at oh, what is it they were almost like security cameras set up with bright lights in them and stuff but the big thing about it was it was looking for where the most action was you know in four different sections oh all of a sudden there's a lot of action over here he's probably chopping up onions on the cutting board we zoom in on that and show that one as our main camera.
You know, and part of the thing with this pizza is pistachios. You heard me right, pistachios. And interestingly, I had my mom pick the cheapest, which I was expecting to be the shelled pistachios, because they're, if you just look at the price, they are cheaper in bulk at Winco. But then my mom pointed out that you have to throw half of it away because of the shell, so it's probably cheaper to buy the shelled pistachios. We're gonna, I'm gonna have to test that one out, because you gotta also realize too that you're also paying for the work of the people or the machines to shell it. So I don't know, but we'll have to see if it is cheaper per pound or not. Then there's like, I don't know, at the dollar store you can get 0.3 ounces of pistachios for a dollar. Pistachios are expensive. Let's see how much cheese this gives us. Okay. Now, you're always even with other types of cheese that I've used. Give it a taste. Yeah. Mm. I like how there's a slight saltiness to it. And there always ends up being like these um, these little, I don't know, logs of cheese rolling around at the top. You just shake those off into the rest of the cheese there. Kind of get any little cheese bits out of the holes in the grater. Well, being careful not to cut yourself too. It's not like super sharp, but it's sharp enough that it can um, do carrots and almonds and stuff like that. It's I, I love the Bosch quite a bit. Now, I really wish this was, um, all I know to call it is real mozzarella, but like the mozzarella that's used at Lucy's Pizza is not low moisture part skim milk. Not at all. So, we've got that one good. I'm going to go ahead and restart my recording here. So, I don't know. I'll keep going. I just need to really watch my time so it doesn't all of a sudden just stop recording and I'm still cooking. And then, oh no, we missed part of it. You know, I realize too, even if the crust does become a little bit more dry on top, our sauce is going to fix that up right away. I'm Okay, so I've got some chicken defrosting in the pan right there. So I decided to add some chicken for my stepdad who doesn't eat meat except for chicken and I think turkey. And we come in here with our ninja. That's about a half cup of pistachios. Fill that with some oil. Looks like we're just over three quarters, but keep in mind the pistachios are there making it feel a little more. I'm going to grab some garlic out of the fridge. Oh, nice cold fridge. Nice big clove of garlic right there. I wish it was a little bit bigger, but hey, whatever. Go ahead and pop that in. Turning my uh, chicken water down some. It's going to end up partially cooked anyways with this defrost. And off our chicken water now. Now I'm trying to decide whether or not to keep this just oil mix or add tomato. I mean it already already smells amazing with the garlic on there. I'm gonna take a spoon here and give it a little taste, see what I think. Mmm, that's good. A little tomato, so... Pitted diced tomatoes, I prefer peeled crushed tomatoes. But this will be good enough. I don't want a lot of tomato. I just want a little bit of tomato, so... So we're still just, we're just under a cup. I'm going to say maybe a quarter, quarter cup of tomato, approximately. So it's able to, you know, really do a number and actually puree this thing. Give it another taste. I can double dip because I'm making for home. Shh, don't pull anyone. Mm. I like that a lot. I'm glad I'm recording this. 
I'll have this for later. Meat cutting board. Cow in the corner. It's a meat cutting board. We're back. I just had to delete some stuff off of my camera. This is not the best method, but we'll be able to save this. Grab myself a knife. Cut some strips of chicken off. It's still raw in the center. Oh yeah, there's still a little bit of frozen part, which is perfect. Okay, chicken is cut up. I should really do like uh, a head mounted camera, almost like GoPro, but maybe mount that on my head somehow. I don't normally use a small pan, but I'm going to. Get it warming up on five. I want just a little bit of oil in the bottom of the pan. Good old extra virgin olive oil. Come with a little bit of Himalayan pink salt. I did 10 grinds of that stuff. I don't know, a teaspoon or so. Some nice pepper. Not the greatest because there's still a bit of moisture on here, but we have successfully coated our chicken. Go ahead and plop that down into the pan. I'm just going to reach over and turn it up to 7 now. And I need to get myself a spatula here. Now's the point where I just want to toss them in the oil. Get them coated. Get that going, we can move our cutting board over to here. Go ahead and turn our element back down to 5. Just want to toss that chicken again. We're going to come on with some peppers really quickly. Boom, boom, boom. Here we go. Here we go. Steam's going to rise up. It's going to be trapped in there. Create a heat pocket on top. I'm just going to turn it down one. And pepper time. I do like to um, keep as much of the pepper as possible. I feel like you waste a lot by just chopping off of the top. So I am just afterwards kind of folding it inwards, pulling out the top of the pepper. That's a method that you can do. There's a method you can do with big peppers where you kind of just push it in on the pepper. But these are mini peppers. Their advantage is that you can get all the different colors, minus green, except for a little green there, in your whatever it is you're cooking. And you don't have lots of it because you used some big peppers or you don't have half of the big peppers in something, or like half of the big pepper in the fridge because you need some red and some green. I kind of do wish they would have green in here, although green isn't ripe at all with any pepper, even jalapeno. They're supposed to be red for fully ripe, and that's when they're sweeter. I think it goes green, orange, yellow, red, but I'm not positive. Oh, and it's not the sun that does any of this, because in the old house that I had, I grew a pepper once in the window, the little pepper plant. And there was a pepper that was half yellow, half red, and the halfway line was straight out the window. Now, for this, normally I do dices, but I'm deciding to go quicker and earlier, and just do, um, just do the cross section. Cuts like that. I'm just thinking of, um, Here's a YouTube channel I recently discovered called My Virgin Kitchen. He's made like clear potato chips or crisps as they're called over there in England. And I'm wondering, very yeah, highly doubtful he'll actually see this, although I will try and send it his way if I remember. How do you do it? How do you, you man, got a lot of, you put out all these videos and it's just you. Spends a lot of extra time on them, but I've got a lot of stuff on my hands right now, too. A lot of products. I'm thinking about turning down the YouTube channel so I can finish up a book that I've been working on for years that I haven't touched in a while. I don't know. We'll see. We will see.
but also I kind of want to do one of all of the months that I have slotted for my channel, at least. Especially since I'm going on a mission, and it will be two years without me. I'll try and have something. I'm, I'm hopefully going to try and have... I need to get my act together, but I want to have it where like there's some one thing per month, and it's on a scheduled upload kind of a thing for the next two years. We'll see. I just realized this is quite a few peppers for that pizza. So I might not actually use all of them, but... Also, I'm going to leave the insides in. You can eat the insides. I think they're not as good as the outside. They're a little more bitter, but I like the seeds, too. Okay. So there's our peppers. Um, I don't know. Let me grab both of these. We'll see. We'll see how much I actually use. Yeah, we will see how much these I actually use. And then, you know, I can, like, freeze the... That's the thing I should do, like, is um, just dice a bunch of peppers and then freeze them. Whereas right now what we do is we buy a big bag of peppers and then we just freeze them right away so that they will last longer than, you know, because they go moldy before we use them all just in the fridge. Let's give our chicken a little check here. Oh, yeah, that is nice-looking chicken to me. You guys should see some of the chicken. Basically now what we want to do is just let the excess moisture cook off of that chicken. I like a slightly drier chicken than some people do. Red onion. You know I'm not going to use all of this. I'll probably use like half of this red onion or so. I'm just going to peel it off over here. You guys see that little barcode right there on the... It's always usually you get up there and then you're like, item lookup. Uh, search by name because I don't know the number. Uh, red, R E D, red onion right there. Weigh your onions. But with this, you can actually scan this. I did it today and it worked and it said weigh your items. And then it, it did actually like the name of the item and the receipt was uh, red onions. But yeah. If you haven't had a red onion, I encourage you to give it a try. Red onions are a little bit sweeter. Not as sweet as Walla Walla sweet onions, but you have to get actual Walla Walla sweets from Walla Walla. It's the dirt. So now what I'm going to do, actually, I'm going to come next. And I'm just going to carefully, not all the way, but chop off most of the rooty section of the onion. And put that piece up there. I'm going to take this back here. I'm just giving it a quick rinse off and sink so I don't have any more um, sections of onion that I don't want in my food. And then for this, I need to get my knife too because it's got my onion too on it. For this, I want some like strips of onion, but I'm thinking not like full length strips. So I'm going to do like I normally would do for your onion dice. Go back there and carefully get some of these sections that I feel are tad big. They're falling apart on me now. Now what I'm going to do is then I'm just going to go in half like that. And then I will finish off the other half by just saying goodbye roots. Going to clean through where my lines were originally and finishing off any cuts. Now those ends are going to be a little more stuck together, but... Uh, onions were good onions now. Now, pepperoni on half of the pizza. We got this big pep here. But I think I'm going to do small pep. I'm going to do some small pep. So let's do some small pep. Uh, the guy who works at Lucy's used to be my co-worker because I used to work there. He said, they like crust, but they don't. And that basically means you really want to get your sauce kind of right up to the edge, leaving less than you would think for crust. And it also does kind of sort of bubble up and do the magic. So there is our pistachio garlic sauce. Oh, cheese. And then my cheese goes down first. If you don't know where the cheese goes on the pizza which order, then just don't pay enough attention to pizza. 
not necessarily a bad thing, but it means that you just don't pay attention. That's me. I yeah. always forget. Does it go over the toppings or under the toppings? It's always under the toppings. I mean, sometimes over, and you would get slight advantage, like if your toppings might want to fall off, you know, then you add layer of cheese on top and underneath, and then it kind of sticks it together a little bit better, but I can use all this cheese. Okay, that looks good to me. Not like perfectly round as the pan, but hey. Yes. Okay, there is our um, chicken. Just before I get too ahead of myself, should make sure that this is still it's going to be a little bit slimy. Not like it's supposed to, but whatever. We will. We'll, we'll find a way to make this work. We'll get it. Okay. Then. And for some reason, this pack doesn't have a slot. I hate it when pet packs are like this. It doesn't help anyone. Oh, it's still even sealed below the, the zipper. Thank you, Hormel. Oh, but no, really, they're good company. I love the company. And doesn't have this issue with like 99% of the packages. So. Mm -hmm. The this pep's a little bit oily, but it's been warm in the house. And so that's what happens when your pep gets warm. It's not bad. It's just going to be a little bit oilier right off the bat. Pep with crackers is always good too, especially like Greta, which I haven't seen at the dollar store in a while. I hope that we don't stop carrying Greta. Be so sad. Make me cry. Actual tears. You know, I wonder if you could get a place where you're like, so half the pizza is gonna have pepperoni, but could you put double on, but just charge me single because it's the pepperoni from the other half? You know, because that guy doesn't want. Could you do that? Are there places that will let you do that? I think that would be uh, cool. That one's a little bit thick. So, and if you're doing half chicken, half pepperoni, and you want the double pepperoni, then they'd have to charge you for two toppings It'd be a instead full of one. Yeah. Well, no, wouldn't they just charge you one? Because, yeah, it would be a full pepperoni. Yeah. But you're still, chicken. yeah, you're still paying for them though. Right. So it would be because I mean, if you do half and half. I don't, they still charge you for the chicken and the pepperoni, and they only put it on half of it. Or do they? I thought they just charged you for one topping, and half of it's pepperoni. I wish they would, yeah. But also there are different prices for the toppings, though. I think pepperoni is cheaper than chicken. That looks good enough on our peppers. Let's do a little bit of red onion quickly. Not that chunk. These are thick peppers. Yeah, I could have done them a little bit more fine with them. Kind of sort of quick and dirty. Just a little more onion on this part right here. Okay, I'm going to say that is good. Cut to putting it in the oven. So oven time for our pizza. It's at 450. Um, I just decided to do 450. I don't know what they do at a Lucy's, but I do know that like, uh, love it. Four, no, 425 is take and bake. But I don't know, 450, good enough. I will turn it down to 425. It's still going to be hot, but that's okay. Um, I was able to get the pizza to slide again using a uh, normal full size uh, cornmeal. cornmeal. And I worked it underneath the pizza. Like I lifted up the edge and sprinkled it under. And I worked it under using this thing right here, which uh, I'll tell you about it in just a second. As soon as I get this pie in the oven. Okay, that's good enough for me. I'm satisfied. It's oven time. My masterpiece is going in to our blistering hot 450 degree oven. Okay, come on, pie. Yeah. Ah. We did it. The miracle of miracles. It worked. We did it. Boy, if Chad that's the guy who worked at Lucy's. And if Chad and the boys could see me now. Oh. Okay. Okay. Slide that back in. 
I'm going to quickly grab some tongs and rescue those toppings. Boom, good enough for me, good enough for you. Set a timer and come back. So I have my timer set for 15 minutes. We're going to check this. Looking really good here. I am going to do another five minutes. Just give those toppings a little extra time to cook down. We'll go from there. Right, it's been five minutes. Let us see what our status is. Yeah, the veggies are feeling soft. That, that looks good. I'm going to call it. I'm going to say the oven can go off. We are going to pull this puppy out of the oven. Bring it up onto our counter here. That's easy. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. Good enough. And nice part is it's not sticking. We got a lovely crust on the outside here. Probably a little bit much on top of for this like size and uh, kind of the crust thickness, but hey. Hey, hey, hey! There's the pizza wheel! I'm just gonna use this little pizza wheelie because I cannot find the big pizza wheelie. Mom found the big pizza wheelie. So, over here it does not have pepperoni. Yep, here's something to help serve it with. Um, actually, this is interesting. So, uh, Dad, this is my stepfather. Do you know what this is? Just looks like an elongated spatula. Uh, yeah, it does look like a cake spatula. So here's what it actually is. A long time ago, uh, we were trying to get a lawnmower sharpened on the blades again, and we got, we got the chain replaced from Cutler's, but they couldn't sharpen the blades, because it's the one that goes like this, turbine, or whatever you call it, instead of around on the bottom. It's better for your grass, cuts better, so we found this nice elderly gentleman who was willing to do the sharpening for us and you know we paid him just a little bit but it was kind of pro bono. Along with helping us with that and whatnot, he gave us this and this is a never ever used, not even once, rocket propellant stir stick. Oh. So it, yeah, it, definitely good for spreading on cake and holding up in the kitchen if it can stir rocket propellant. So, and, cool. yeah, that's what I used to slide the extra cornmeal underneath so that it would slide off, and, yeah. Well, it's pretty. The colors are still vibrant. Mm -hmm. I think I need a fork. Mm. I need a knife. This is why if I actually set utensils, because it needs it, I set everything. And nobody ever has to get up. So I will say right off the bat, kind of picky about my cheese and whatnot, and this cheese, well, let me try some now, tastes fine, but the smell, I don't like the smell. Same thing with raw meat, oh, drugs, but it tastes yummy, hamburger, chicken. There's a lot of cornmeal under there, I can taste it. Yeah, it is probably... A bit more cornmeal-y than usual. The cheese does taste really good. Mm -hmm. My mouth is essentially confused because I'm normally expecting a tomato sauce base and you don't have that, do you? There is some tomato in there, but okay. not a lot. You said it's pistachio garlic yep. sauce? The flavor works for me. It's just very different. My mouth is going... Wait, I thought you said you were having pizza. It's good. Yeah. I agree that it works too. I still don't need to find out where you get like real mozzarella cheese. Not low moisture part skin milk. So, yeah, um, consensus is combination works. It's a mm -hmm. good pizza. <clears throat> mm -hmm. mm -hmm. Thank you guys so much for watching. If it feels like this video could use a little bit of editing to shorten it, it probably could. I was just probably being quick and dirty. 
if I don't get around to editing it because it needs to be released this month. But, yeah, check out, um, there's other episodes of Cooking with Other Fazar on here, other food things I've done, a lot of other great stuff. Welcome coming out, see you guys in whatever.